if we're missing a coordinate on the midpoint, how do we find missing coordinates? Well, it says find the midpoint of A if P is 3 and 1 half is the midpoint of AB. That's a segment AB. And B has the coordinate of 8, 3. Okay. So we have this line. Let's go ahead and draw this line just so you can conceptualize it. We have line AB, and we know that there's a point P that is the midpoint, okay? I know we've been calling it M, but we can call it whatever we want. And P makes sense, it's a point, right? It's a midpoint. So step one is substitute the known information. We're gonna substitute the known information. Okay, so I know that my midpoint equals that x1 plus x2 all over 2 and y1 plus y2 all over 2. I know this about my midpoint. I also know that my midpoint is already 3 and a half. I know it's that point P, but I'm just labeling it a midpoint. We're told that the midpoint P, 3 and 1 half, is the midpoint, right? Okay, so I know that, and I know my B coordinate. What I don't know is my A coordinate. So I know my X2, Y2. What I don't know is my X1 and Y1. Okay, I don't know that, but I do know my B is a three. So how can I use this? Well, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna set it up. That means I know that my midpoint is equal to, I'm just gonna fill in these values right here. I don't know my x1, but I do know my x2, which is eight, all over two. And I don't know my y1, but I do know my y2, which is Three and all that over two. You still may be looking at this saying, Mr. Tim, this does not look good for us. It's all right. Now we're going to write and solve the equation. So first, let's do, let me go ahead and separate this, and let's do x. So here's what I know. To solve for x1, I know that my x1 plus 8 all over 2, I'm told that it'll equal 3. So I'm going to set it equal to 3. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Right? What I do to one side, I do the other. This is going to cross out with that 2, and I'm going to be left with x1 plus 8 equals 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, right, simply just subtract 8 from both sides, and I get that x1 equals negative 2. That wasn't too bad. Let's try it with a y point. So, I know that for y1, I'm told right here that y1 plus 3, that's a y, yes, all over 2, should equal 1 half. So I'm going to do the same thing. You're going to notice this. Every time we start by multiplying by 2, and I get that y1, because those cross out, plus 3 equals, now I'm going to multiply by 2 on this side, and this time those are going to cross out, so it just equals 1. And when I subtract 3, I get that my y1 equals negative 2. Look at that. So what is my a point? My a is the point negative 2, negative 2. Looky, looky. I got a hooky. It's from the movie Hook. It's good movie. Anyway, back in the day, Rob Williams, good stuff. So that's how we find the missing point. So what you're seeing right now, guys, we're starting to get into some real math. We're going to start mixing applications and doing things together that we've been doing in separate pieces. Okay? So here's what I want to find this time. I want to find the coordinate of t if s is negative 1, 
1 is the midpoint. So we know the midpoint S is negative 1, 1 of RT, and R has the coordinate negative 3, 5. So we see it's already labeled right here, negative 3, 5. We don't know what T is, but we know S is negative 1, 1. So what am I going to do? Well, let's solve. First of all, step 1, right? We know that the midpoint is equal to negative 1, 1. Next, I'm going to set it equal. I know that negative 1, 1 is equal to, this time I have my x1, y1, but what I don't have is my x2, y2. Now, ultimately, guys, this doesn't matter, but just for the purposes of us practicing, I do want to put it in order. And I know that this should equal, what's my first point? It's going to be negative 3 plus x2 all over 2. And my y point is going to be 5 plus y2 all over 2. Okay? And then let's do step 2. Step 2 says, hey, you know what? Let's do it one at a time. So to get my x2, I'm going to say negative 3 plus x2 all over 2 should equal negative 1. And again, multiply both sides by 2. Cross out, and I get negative 3 plus x2 equals negative 2. Add 3 to both sides, and we get that x2 equals 1. Okay, that's our start. Let's finish off with our y2. Our y2, such that 5 plus y2 over 2 should equal positive 1 this time. Again, multiply both sides by 2. Those are going to cross out. I get 5 plus y2 equals 2. Subtract both sides by 5. And y2 equals negative 3. Boom. So what is my point T? My point T is that point. I don't really have enough room to write it there. But it's going to be 1, negative 3. So 1, negative 3, right? Awesome. Which makes sense. To get from 1 to negative 1 means I go back 2, right? And to get from negative 3 up to 1 means I'm going up 4. Well, let's see. To get from this point, let's look what we do. To get from negative 1 to negative 3, I still have to go back 2 again. So it's the same thing we did down here. And to get from 1 to 5, it's up 4. So notice how those are the exact same. That's what we want. A midpoint should have the same slope triangle. Awesome. We've got just one thing left happening here. We're going to talk about bisectors. All right, we see this definition right here, bisectors. And what is a bisector? It is any, any, <laughs> I got to spell that right, any segment line planar point, any segment line, plane, or point that bisects a segment. And we're going to talk about, all right, find the measure of xy if y is the midpoint of xz. Well, if y is the midpoint, that means it bisects these two segments. So they are, we're going to put this one little tick mark here to show that they are congruent. So to find what the measure of xy is, right, x to the middle there, xy, first we've got to solve for a. So I can, I'm going to set these equal to each other, 3a equals a plus 14. Why can I do that? Because the definition of a midpoint is that it bisects a line segment. It splits it in half, it makes each side equal to the other side. So let's go ahead and finish solving for this. We get 2a equals 14, or a equals 7. And if that's true, and I want to find the dist distance xy, xy simply equals 3 times 7, which is 21. All right? So 
why don't you pause me, and I'm going to have you guys try the next two. Find the measure of AC if B is the midpoint of AC, and find the measure of PR if Q is the midpoint of PR. Ready, set, go. Awesome! I'm assuming you have paused this, and so let's just do this. We're going to have 5x minus 3 equals 2x plus 9. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and add 3 to both sides. Just to do this all at once, we get 3x it's gone, gone, equals 12, or x equals 4. Boom. And we need to find the measure of AC. So this one's a little different. I want to find the entire measure from here to here. To do that, guys, first I'm going to find the measure from A to B, and then I'm just going to multiply it times 2. So in other words, I know that AC equals 2 times AB. Now let's fill in what we know about AB. So that's going to be 2 times that 5x minus 3, which is 5, times our x of 4 minus 3. 5 times 4 is 20. So I'm going to have equals 2 times 17, which is 34. So I know that AC is th the measure of AC is 34. Boom! Isn't that awesome? Okay, let's try this last one right here. It says find the measure of PR. So again, the whole thing, if Q is the midpoint of PR. So again, it's the midpoint. These sides are equal to each other. We set them equal. 11x minus 4 equals 5x plus 20. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides and add 4 at the same time. And I get 6x equals 24, or x equals 4. And then again, it's just 2 times one of those sides. I'm going to go ahead and do it with this side. So I'm going to have PR is equal to 2 times my 5 times my x of 4 plus 20. Cut off there so we can see these don't intersect each other. And that's just 20 plus 20 or 40. So I'm going to have that equals 2 times 40, which is 80. Boom. That is my final answer. Awesome. All right. It's been a long lesson, but I'm glad for hanging with me. With that said, peace out.